Hello everyone, my name is Relax and Panic and this is another reaction. And it is for Bakemonogatari episode 10. You know what to do as always if you want to see the reaction itself, just go down into my description. You will find a link replaces circumflex dot parts with real dots and uh, well you can see the reaction. Once you've done, come here and uh, hear me out um, about my thoughts about this episode if you like. So see you soon. For those of you that came back, welcome back. So let's see, there was some surprising in many ways this episode because I really, well, I kind of guessed that we may even solve it in one episode, but that went pretty fast. Um, but well, we did not really solve it in the end. Um, we just took them away and they are running wild now. Um, but let's go through it one by one. So those, uh, this snake slash those snakes, as we now know, are called Jagiri Nava. So, um, and as far as I understood, it came from a more neither minor curse, which normally wouldn't have worked when it is done by a amateur, as it was here. So, um, it was the fact that she tried to lift the curse at the uh, abandoned temple, at the destroyed temple, and thus this area is becoming like a whirlpool of evil. Um, that's why instead of lifting it, she made it worse. So I can see that. Um, so her classmates um, cursed her in the end, as it seems, two of them. Um, one was the boy that liked her and she resented him because as it seems she likes Aragi. And the other one was a, um, a friend of this guy, a female friend, who he confessed to. So she thought it was only her, but as it seems it were both of them. That's why there are two snakes. Makes sense. Um, so... She, um, that's why she chopped away the snakes, why she killed snakes and put them in pieces towards this temple. And uh, according to Shino, that is a way to do it. Okay, interesting. <laughs> um, however, well, as I said, wrong place to do it. Um, I'm uh, a little bit intrigued about the way what Oshino himself is doing. So he, as that's why I chose this picture here. He um, puts chairs and uh, alike on each other to sit higher. I don't know why. Maybe there's a reason for it. He kind of wants to have like a throne. I don't know. Um, but I remember that additionally he puts um, those um, wanting to say glyphs, but it's not um, the the written parchments, those that save you from evil, that protect you from evil spirits and the like. He puts those on those chairs as well. So I ask myself if he is having kind of a problem that he doesn't want to touch the earth, maybe. I mean, he is in a building um, which is not really completed, sits on chairs um, on top of each other as though he wants to be far away from the ground. I mean, maybe it's just spleen, no question there, but maybe there is more to it. So I will keep an eye open for that one. Um, but the one thing that he definitely says here to uh, Aragi is um, that one day he will leave the city, this town, and um, then he will not be able to help anymore and Araragi has to come to terms where he wants to go, what he wants to do, um, because in the way that he acts, he cannot go forever. We had this already um, in the discussion from his girlfriend, where uh, she said the same, Mornida and um, He's in a spirit to always want to help people. And um, he throws himself into the line of fire, as he did last uh, second last episode. So, um, that will endanger him. <coughs> I'm sorry. Oh my. Um, and that's what we've seen in this episode again. Um, yes, he has the benefit of healing very fast. Um, but if he comes to meet something or someone who is very powerful, like such an aberration. He is likely to be killed or destroyed, whatever you want to name it. So um, he has to think about that. And uh, the question is, don't you want to put your, your own safety first? Um, the I caught the one thing um, here that Oshino Meme said, 
if you are cutting your bonds to um, Oshino, um, uh, Oshino Shinobu, so to the little girl, the vampire girl, then you will be a normal human again. So they are bound to each other, or at least he's bound to her. Um, so as long as he's not, I guess, like giving up on her, um, he will be still one tenth vampire. But the um, question is, is that good? Uh, we have not, I have not at least, uh, learned a lot about those um, connection between those two, those two, except that she's drinking his blood and then he becomes stronger, which still is strange to me. Um, so I kind of hope we will learn more about that in the next episode, because it is just now, you know, um, in the last episodes we got more and more clues into this direction. Um... Yeah, well, uh, we had a little bit of backflash, which I liked. It was very nicely done. Um, it looked like one of those old film noir, or if you see very old movie, they have this, um, um, yeah, cramped up style that uh, the that you have little light flickers in between, which is, as far as I know, due to the material that uh, the movie was recorded on. So they did this, um, and I like it. And you can never see Aragi just as shadow, and you see what he answered to her. So that's a nice one interesting way to do it um so he repaired her bike in the past and she kind of fell for him i think um although in this case when he was six class and she is four years younger i mean that's a little bit too soon to fall in love with someone but it's possibly like a i like you very much thing um and you know the big brother thing here um Right now, it's possibly more. No question there. She, um, well, might become obsessed with him even. Um, which might once again cause a little bit of problems with Senjugahara, which I'm really looking forward to. Um, I like the fact that the way to the temple when they went there looked like a snake itself. So uh, they made that one pretty good. Um, so, and even the tree in some perspectives looked like snakes with tongs towards the sky. So, uh, they really went on with the theme. Um, there is something in the background still going on, um, which may become another storyline, I'm not sure. Um, so, Oshino mentioned that the class representative, um, forgot everything. So, uh, when they were talking about... Aragi being able to be turned into a full human again. Um, that we have to make choices and stuff, you know. Um, and he went, Oshino Mime mentioned that, as example, the class representative, which I'm pretty sure is uh, Hamikawa, forgot everything, which means there was something before. And um, so question is, what did she forget? Is it good that she did forget? Is it bad that she did forget? And uh, will it jump us in the back uh, somewhere in the future with me not knowing what the heck was going on? Um, yeah, then we went for the snakes. So um, it was not only one snake. And when the snakes slash the snake uh, arrive at your head or at your throat, they will choke you to death. So that's the main problem, and um, they just take their time. So he made um, her prey in uh, the garden of the temple, um, which worked. You could see it, it, there was an effect, it did work. But I think the problem is thus those were um, uh, two of those, two of those snakes. Um, it simply wasn't strong enough, so it possibly like, um, like cut both snakes a little bit, so it gave them pain, kind of. And they reacted by then going full force into the attack um, and trying to kill her before she kills them. It makes sense. Um, so that was something he did not uh, see and I think Oshino Memo didn't think about either. How should he? Um, so he jumped in and pushed away one of the snakes and then the other one as well. Um, which was a dangerous thing to do because uh, they would be able to jump over to him um, and they are full-grown aberrations so 
Um, that's something we have not really encountered yet. The fact how dangerous those can be. Um, because we more either easily beat them in the past. They were not um, very aggressive in many ways. Except for the last one. I agree. Um, but what I mean is if you think about the crab as example. Yes it was kind of dangerous throwing them around. But it didn't feel like a full life threat there. While those snakes are like wild beasts and they attack him instantly. Um, it might be he's poisoned, I'm not sure about that. But they broke his leg and his arm as it looked. So they have a lot of power in them. Um, I really thought he would maybe try something like marking them with his blood so he can see them and fight them. But in the end even he had to understand that um, he's simply not strong enough to face them. At, for sure not both of them. Possibly not even one of them, um, because he's like only one tenth aberration. Um, so we know he can boost himself by uh, letting Shinobu drink from him, but she wasn't there. So the one that in the end uh, did the game here was um, instead uh, Kambaru, who jumped in and pushed him out of the way when the snake was coming, because he wanted to stand in the way of the snake to attack her, I think. And she truly uh, stated the fact that snakes are not normally not attacking. They are running away. Why should they attack? They are like one hit and either they won or they try to uh, slither away. So both of the snakes ran away. Which means from what we know they are now going towards um, the boy and the girl. And now we have the question. What is the right thing to do? Um... I think the way that Aragi normally acts, he would try to find those two and help them. And possibly try to convince Oshino to do it, uh, to help him as well, to give him more of those um, blessings or whatever, so that he can do it, that he can get rid of those snakes. Um, thing here is the snakes do exist because those two people cursed the girl first. Um, and I mean, if you do something that, like that, I mean, even if you think it's not working, that is something, who sits down and says, I put a curse on you, like full-fledged curse. Um, yeah, what goes around comes around. That's the one thing that Oshino said. Um, I am not sure about this. It's complicated in many ways. Because yes, uh, they uh, brought it on themselves. I can see that. And thus I would understand that, uh, especially Yoshino, but maybe Aragi, Aragi will not go after the snakes. But on the other hand, do you really want to have two people, let alone still more and either kids, being killed by such aberrations? Doesn't that make you bad in some way? You know, I mean, they brought it on themselves, but they were just kids when they did it. Talking about possibly like second class school kids or maybe fourth class. I mean, that's kids um, And even that even though they did it um, They were just playing kind of you know, there's it, it's a stupid thing what they did, but Really want to let them die now So I'm not sure what's going on next time um, Right now it feels as though this story arc might be closed might be But I kind of hope it is not um, because I, um, yes, that's me. Um, I'm a sucker for good endings. Uh, I really would like, um, always honey, bees and sunshine. So I always like more the endings where, um, Aragi can save someone. Really does. So I hope we have another episode about this theme. And, um, hopefully some kind of help here from, I guess, Oshino. To get rid of the snakes. That's what I hope. What will be. I have no clue. As always. So. That's the question right now. What goes around comes around. Is this like karma in your opinion? Do you think it is okay. That those two kids die? Or do you agree that. Um, someone should do something. Um. So the thing is here, uh, if there's someone who has the potential, talking about that. Aragi, at the moment, in my opinion, cannot do anything. 
Then is the question, would you jump in to try to save the kids, even though you know you have no chance? Because that makes no sense. You die, possibly they die as well. Just one more dead. So I think that is the question here, which Oshino tries to shine a light on. Especially when he's no more longer around, then um, Aragi will have to choose his fights more carefully. Because he has no big brother watching over his shoulder for him. That's it. I hope you like this. Um, as always, please feel free to like, to comment and to subscribe. Um, have a visit at my, at my Facebook page. Have a visit at my uh, Patreon if you like. And uh, yeah, that's it for this time. So until the next time, my name is Relax and Panic. Goodbye and out.